This is the Clockwork Pie Pico Calc. It's a Raspberry Pi based DIY kit that you build yourself, but its real potential goes way beyond calculations. With a simple firmware update, this device can be transformed into a powerful portable serial terminal for your other hardware projects. Using just the Pico Calc's keyboard, I can send commands directly to a device like this Flipper Zero. I could then see the output, navigate menus, and interact with it completely, all without needing a laptop. It's a full command line interface that fits in your pocket. This is all possible thanks to a free open source firmware I created called PicoWare. And with the brand new version 1.5.4 update, we can install powerful tools like this directly on the device from an app store. I'm Jay Blanks, and today I'm going to show you how to turn your PicoCalc into a pocket sized powerhouse. Let's get into it. So what exactly is PicoWare? Well, it's a custom open source firmware I created to completely replace the stock software on the PicoCalc. Um, original devices are shipped with the PicoMite firmware, which runs the basic programming language. And that's fun for a retro feel, but I wanted to unlock the true potential of the Raspberry Pi Pico W board inside. Instead of a locked down system, PicoWare gives you a powerful on the go development environment with a graphical user interface and handy status icons. Think of it as turning your calculator from a tool that gives you answers into a platform for building things that ask new questions. So how do you get it? The installation is as easy as dragging and dropping a file. So first you'll need your PicoCalc obviously. Uh, you also need a computer and a micro USB cable that can handle data transfer. A charging only cable won't work here. We'll also be using the micro USB port on the Raspberry Pi Pico board itself, which you can get to through the back. Step 1. Download the PicoWare firmware. Head to the official PicoWare GitHub page linked in the description below. Then go to the builds folder. Then click MicroPython. And now find the UF2 file that matches your hardware. And for step 2, we need to put the PicoCalc into bootloader mode. We need to find the tiny boot select button on the Pico board. Now I'm using a custom case from the user N602, which completely exposes the Pico. However, if you're still using the stock case, you can reach the boot select button with a wooden toothpick or something similar. So press and hold that button. And while you're holding it, plug the micro USB cable into your computer and then plug it into your Raspberry Pi Pico. Step three, your computer will detect the PicoCalc as a new USB drive called RPI-RP2 if you're using the Pico or Pico W or called RP2350 if you're using the Pico2 or Pico2 W. Now, all you have to do is drag and drop the UF2 firmware file you downloaded onto that drive. It will copy, automatically eject, and then reboot. And that's pretty much it. You've just installed PicoWare. Now that you have PicoWare installed, you can tap into the PicoWare app store. This lets you download and install community built apps directly on the device as long as you have Wi Fi connection. From here, click enter to access the main menu. Then click up and then click Wi Fi. Click up again, then click enter from settings. And then you go and type in your SSID and then you'll do the same thing for your password. After that, you go and click 
back. Then you go up to connect and enter. Once inside, click up to disconnect and then click right to attempt to connect to your Wi-Fi. Next, back out of the Wi-Fi menu and then navigate to the App Store. Here you'll find a list of available programs and we're looking for the Serial Terminal app. Just click up and then click enter. Now, if we click enter again, the PicoCalc will download the necessary files and install the application for you. No more manually copying Python scripts from a computer for this. It's all done on the device itself. Once installed, go back, back again, and then up to the applications and inside, you should see the serial terminal. All right, let's put our new app to the test. So why is a portable serial terminal a big deal? Well, if you work with hardware like Raspberry Pi, Arduino, or a Flipper Zero, you're often tethered to a laptop to see debug messages or send commands. This setup puts that power in your pocket. First, the physical connection is incredibly simple. We just need three wires running between the PicoCalx GPIO pins and the Flipper's GPIO. So we start by connecting a ground to a ground, ground there, and on the PicoCalc, the ground is the last one there. So it's number eight. Um, and then we need to cross the TX pin from one device to the RX pin of the other device. So on the Flipper Zero, they have marked TX and RX pins, and on the PicoCalc, GPIO4 is the TX, and GPIO5 is the RX. Okay, now we're ready to run the app. As you saw at the beginning, I can type commands on the PicoCalc's keyboard, and they execute instantly on the Flipper Zero. The flipper can also communicate to the PicoCalc by using the Serial Terminal app. So now we have a full featured pocket size command line for all your hardware project. This alone makes the firmware worth it, but we're not done yet. Now this next app feels like a superpower. We're going to turn the PicoCalc into a fully configurable web server. The Raspberry Pi Pico W and Pico 2W boards inside have a built-in Wi-Fi chip, and this app unleashes its full potential using MicroPython. But this isn't just about serving a single static web page. This app lets you build a multi-page website right from the PicoCalc's menu. You can define different URL routes, and for each route, you can specify an HTML file to display. More importantly, you can assign a Python script to execute when the page is requested. This means your web page can be dynamic. When a user visits the URL, the PicoCalc can run a script, process data, and generate the HTML response on the fly. And with this, you could create a web interface with buttons to control motors or a dashboard to monitor your projects from anywhere on your local network. So it's a portable web-based remote for any project you can dream up. All right, now let's see it in action. From the app, I'll go into the edit menu and then I'll select add a page. And here I have to define the URL. So we'll use test. And then go down and click save. And for our simple test today, we'll point it to a basic HTML template. So go down to view pages. It seems I have a duplicate, so let's delete the first one from before. 
and we're going to edit our new one which is this one here we'll click ok to edit and now go down to html and click enter we type in the path of the HTML that's on our SD card. I have one on my SD card called index.html. And then scroll down and click save. And now we can go back and start the server. Go back again and then we'll go and click start. So as soon as we click start, the screen tells me the server is running and gives me the local IP address. And now on your computer, make sure you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And then in a web browser, go to the local IP address. Slash test at the end and make sure to put the last slash and then click enter. And there it is, a web page served directly from the calculator. So with one firmware update, your PicoCalc has gone from a simple calculator into a pocket-sized creative platform. The new PicoWare version 1.5.4 update with its on-device app store makes it easier than ever to install new tools. You now have a portable serial terminal in your pocket to connect to your other projects like the Flipper Zero. And you have a configurable web server too. Let me know in the comments what you plan to build first. And if you want to see more PicoCalc tutorials, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm Jay Blinked. Thanks for watching. Peace.